This video series will cover some of the common questions that are asked about Ruckus Smart Mesh. In this training, we'll cover the following questions and topics. Does Smart Mesh support client access on the same radio? Does Mesh have priority over user traffic? What is the maximum hop count when using Smart Mesh? How is throughput reduced as you increase hop count? How is throughput calculated by the number of hops? A description about mesh convergence times and scenarios. Is smart mesh reliable enough for voice backhaul? What is the typical time for mesh selection? And what do we do to identify and prevent loops? Does smart mesh support meshing and client access on the same radio? The answer is yes. The same radio can be used both for client access and for backhaul. Does mesh have priority over user traffic? We help the mesh link by giving the mesh wireless LAN a higher priority, which means that when it tries to get access to the airtime, it will use a smaller contention window. Essentially, this means that for the same class of traffic, the mesh AP will use a higher priority and smaller window for contention. So the result is that mesh APs will have a higher priority for data or voice packets. What is the maximum hop count when using Smart Mesh? There is a limit to seven hops and eight APs. The APs include a root AP, an EMAP, and a mesh AP. There can be a total of eight APs in a mesh chain, making it as deep as possible. This is a limit in the protocol itself, and for best performance, we recommend a shallower mesh tree. Typically, we don't suggest more than three wireless hops within a mesh tree. How is throughput reduced as you increase the hop count on the mesh APs? The simplest case is when you have no EMAP APs involved. If you are using the same frequency with only a wrap and a MAP AP, for the first hop, you would get the full link speed for that mesh link. Now, if you have to forward one more time for every packet coming down from the wrap or the core AP, you have to send it first to the first hop MAP and then the second time to the second hop MAP. This effectively cuts down the throughput by half compared to the one hop link. If you have three APs in the chain, then you have wrap, map one, and map two, and have to forward the packet twice. If you have one wrap and three maps in the chain, you have to forward it three times, in which case you're actually cutting it down further by taking the one hop throughput and dividing it by the number of hops you have to forward. This degrades the speed by one over n, n being the number of wireless hops. So in our example, between the controller and wrap, let's say that we have 600 megabits per second. Between the wrap and map one, let's say that the mesh speed is 300 megabits per second. Between wrap and map two, our speed would be approximately 150 megabits per second. And between the wrap and map three, the approximate speed would be about 100 megabits per second. How is throughput reduced as you increase the hop count with EMAPs in the chain? Assuming you have an EMAP in the network mesh chain, then the EMAP hop doesn't count because it's over Ethernet and that's as fast as it gets. So in this case, you can take that hop count out of the equation. Furthermore, because you put in an EMAP, typically the upstream and downstream of the EMAP link is actually operating on two different frequencies. If you're fortunate, they're on completely different frequencies and don't interfere and the uplink and downlink throughput is almost unaffected. There is a small overhead, but for all practical purposes, you can ignore it. So in our case, if we have 600 megabits between the controller and the wrap, and we have a mesh speed of 300 megabits between wrap and map one, then effectively between map two and the wrap, we also have 300 megabits per second. How is throughput calculated by the number of hops in a mesh tree without EMAPs? Here we have a core network connected to the wrap via the ethernet, and then to map one, map two, and map three that are connected wirelessly to the wrap. Let's say that the throughput between the wrap and map one is 300 megabits per second, and it's the same speed for M2 and M3, so the individual hops are 300 megabits per second. If I run a speed test between the wrap or core AP and M1, you'll get 300 megabits per second. If we run a speed test from the wrap to map two, for every packet, it has to go through one wireless hop to M1 and then another one from M1 to M2. During this time that the root AP is sending to M1, M1 can't transmit to M2. 
So in that case, the second packet from M1 to M2 has to wait for the first one to clear. So in that case, we get a throughput between M1 and M2 that is half of the throughput between RAP and M1. So the throughput would be 300 divided by 2 or about 150 megabits per second to MAP2. If we were speed testing between the core RAP and M3, then every packet will be repeated and sent three times over the air, and they can't be sent at the same time. So the effective throughput from the core to M3 is now 300 divided by 3 or 100 megabits per second. So we're not quite having every hop, but we're reducing throughput by the frequency of the mesh link divided by the number of hops. Let's go through another example with an EMAP in the mesh tree. Suppose that M1 and M2 are connected by Ethernet. So M2 now becomes an EMAP AP. In this case, if we're running a speed test between the wrap and M1 that goes over the wireless hop, it would be 300 megabits per second. If I'm going from my wrap to M2, which is an EMAP, because there's an Ethernet connection between M1 and M2, there is no bottleneck on the Ethernet between M1 and M2, so the speed will be limited to the throughput between the RAP and M1, so roughly 300 megabits per second minus any delta on the Ethernet link. If we run a speed test between the RAP and M3, because we have an Ethernet in the middle, this allows the EMAP to use a different frequency to talk to M3 than what the RAP and M1 uses. And in this case, I'm assuming that RAP and M1 are using different channels than EMAP2 and M3. And if I run the speed test from RAP to M3, we'll have the packet between RAP and M1 over the air at roughly the same time as a packet over the air between M2 and M3. So they are actually fairly independent. So the speed test will almost end up at 300 megabits per second between the RAP and M3 in theory, but in practice it will be maybe 10 to 20% less, so approximately 80% of 300, or about 240 megabits per second.